Good morning. It's good to be with you. Reverend Wallace sitting in the back today. Hello. Hey. <laughs> and Freddie, I'm sure, is going to be here. We're glad that you're here. Our pastor is taking a rest after Easter. I know as being a pastor, Easter is the pentacle of the, of the church season, and it's exhausting, isn't it, Virginia? <clears throat> I remember doing five or six services on, during the Easter Holy Week, and I was exhausted doing two churches, so uh, welcome to your rest. We're glad you're here at the St. Matthew's United Methodist Church. My name is Kent Sizer. I am a retired United Methodist clergy. And I'm from the Central Texas Conference. And I sing in the choir right over there. Yay, choir. Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're glad that you're here the Sunday after Easter. Uh, you guys know that this is usually the down moment for the church. Oftentimes, people stay away from church in the droves. Uh, but that wasn't the problem with the squirrels. You, you heard about the squirrels? They infested the Church of Christ, the Baptist Church, and the Methodist Church. It was so bad that they, they took everything they could and they tried to get rid of the squirrels from the sanctuary, and they, they were doing a very poor job. The Church of Christ pastor took the squirrels out and he, 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 he did the best he could, and they all came back. Baptist, same thing. But then the Methodist preacher did something different, and there were no squirrels at all. So the Church of Christ pastor and the Baptist preacher come in and say, What's your secret? How did you do it, Methodist pastor? He said, Well, I baptized all the squirrels, and now they only come at Easter and Christmas. <laughs> I stole that joke. <laughs> all right. Well, we're glad that you're here the, the Sunday after Easter, and we're so glad to have you. For those of you who are online and, and being with us, we welcome you here and hope that you can lift up God with your praise in your hearts. Amen. Amen. worship at St. Matthew's. Please respond to the call to worship. My heart is glad, my soul rejoices, and my body rests secure. For you do not abandon me. You give me counsel. You are at my right hand. You show me the path of joy. Your presence is sheer joy. You are my God. Apart from you, I have no good. Blessed is your name. Please bow your head for the opening prayer. <clears throat> Stand among us once again, risen Christ, and bless us with your greeting. Peace be with you. Stand among us once again, exalted brother, and breathe upon us your promised spirit. Stand among us once again, you who have escaped death, and give us new birth into your living hope. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you are able, please stand for the opening hymn.
join me in the Old Testament as a responsive reading from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to show or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Children of all ages, you're invited to come join Miss Nell for a word for the children. Good morning. I'm glad to see your smiling faces today. Thank you for coming down. And I was going to tell you that I brought along my Easter baskets, buckets that I have for my great grands. And I filled them up with all kinds of stuff. You know, last Sunday was Easter Sunday, you remember, right? Yeah, so you know what? We have all kinds of goodies in here. But now look, the candy's gone. The bunnies are in the toy box. The new shoes and the new clothes are in the closet. Probably you wear yours to school already, right? So, and you know what? You don't have another school holiday for a long, long time, do you? So, we don't celebrate Easter again at school, church, in, at home until next year this time, right? So, you think, well, why do you still have these out? I was cleaning off the bar yesterday and I thought, I think it's time for me to put these away until next year, right? Have you put your baskets away? Yeah, they're all gone, everything's out of the way, the candy's gone, everything, mine too, all gone. So, you know what? We just have to think about that Easter is not coming again until next year, but do you remember Reverend Wall started talking to us along about Ash Wednesday about scriptures that we could read from the Bible? And she said that, that it's very important for us to read those scriptures so that we will remember and that we celebrate Jesus all year long, not just at Easter. So we know that Jesus is our risen Lord, right? So today, what I thought I would do is share some of those scriptures that I liked when I was reading my scriptures during Lent, and I would share them with you. Now, what I want you to do is to say them with me, okay? So I've got them marked. I, I didn't put them all, but I have some really good ones for us, and I want you to say it with me after I say it. And this will make you remember that the real reason we celebrate Easter is because Jesus lives. So listen to this first one. It says, he was buried and he was raised on the third day. Say that with me. He was buried and he was raised on the third day. Let's see if I have another one. I like the way you're participating. It says, he is not here. He is risen. Go tell all his disciples. Say that one with me. He is not here. He has risen. 
He says, go and tell all the disciples. And I like this one, especially for Lyra's brother. It says, all who believe and are baptized will be saved. And let's see if I have another one. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Say that one with me. Okay, and let's see, I still have one more. Look, I have a lot of them. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Say that with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Now, we know that the last one that's very special that helps us to remember why we celebrate Easter says, he is risen indeed. Say that like Reverend Wall likes us to speak. He is risen indeed. So I'm going to ask you a question now. Why won't you take on a little activity that you can do and become a disciple for Jesus? Now, I have, let's see, I have some things Mr. Chuck is going to give you here in just a minute. And when you take this string, you can either do one or two things. You can tie it on your finger or you can just dangle it. I like to just dangle them sometimes. And I want you to remember as you're going about that Easter is just not on Easter Sunday, Jesus lives all the time and he cares about us, right? So I want you to take your string and tell somebody today, dangle the string and say, he is risen, yes indeed. Say that for me. Pretty good there. Thank you for that. Come down again.
family and friends, it's offering time. Let us joyfully give to the kingdom of God and to St. Matthew's. There are Easter offering envelopes in the pews. Offering boxes in the lobby are ready to receive your offering, whether it's a general offering or a special Easter offering. For our online worshipers, please note the ways of giving shown on your screen. We thank each of you for supporting the mission and ministries of St. Matthew's and being the hands and feet of Christ in this community and beyond. Please join me in the offertory prayer. God of great mercy, accept our offerings given out of what is more precious than gold, our faith in you, giver of hope and life. Bless our gifts and the givers, O Lord, and through them reveal the risen Christ in acts of mercy, love, and joy. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the hymn and the New Testament reading afterward. Testament reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 14a, and then verse 22 through 32. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. 
for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. And Peter continues, fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. <clears throat> Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the inspired word for all God's people. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, welcome again. So this is the week of Easter. For the next several Sundays, we're going to be celebrating Easter Tide, and it's good to have the regulars with us again. Uh, I've been thinking about this first Christian sermon ever preached. What a fantastic response. 3,000 people respond. Reverend Wall, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> wow, what in the world did Peter say that was so amazing? He, be, he was at the pinnacle of his, his worst self. <laughs> I mean, he, he denied Jesus three times, and yet he spoke the most eloquent, fantastic, amazing, responsive sermon. What is it about sermons that brings people? Is it the fame? Is it the popularity? If only we could find that person with a golden tongue. Maybe we could find a Billy Graham or a, a John Wesley or somebody out there, right? But isn't there something more to church than just simply a sermon? I'm going to tell you today about the fifth gospel and the power of the fifth gospel to change people's lives and make a difference. You know, looking at star quality is something that, that we have been mesmerized in this pop culture of ours. And I'm, I'm going to go back in time, for those of you who can remember that far back, <laughs> to a song. I want you to listen to these words, and you're going to think who this famous person is, okay? Goodbye, Norma Jean. Though I never knew you at all, you had the grace to hold yourself. While those around you crawled, they crawled out of the woodwork and they whispered into your brain. They set you on the treadmill and they made you change your name. And it seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. Never knowing who to cling to when the rain set in. And I would have liked to know you, but I was just a kid. Your candle burned out long before your legend ever did. Loneliness was tough, the toughest role you ever played. Hollywood created a superstar, and pain was the price that you paid. Even though you died, oh, the press still hounded you. All the papers had to say was that Marilyn was found in the nude. And it seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind, never knowing who to cling to when the rain set in. I know I would have liked to have known you, but I was just a kid. Your candle burned out long before your legend ever did. And it seems to me that you lived your life like a candle in the wind, never knowing who to cling to when the rain set in. And I would have liked to have known you, but I was just a kid. Your candle burned out long before your legend ever did. Now, who was this song about? Anybody know? Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. This song was written by Elton John and Bernie Taupin in their Goodbye Yellow Brick uh, Road album. It sold millions of copies and, and was rewritten at the death of Princess Di. And to a 
casual observer with binoculars trying to understand this fame, we take a look at this fleeting temporal fame like a candle blowing in the wind. Temporary, sporadic, never knowing who to cling to when the, wind, the rain sets in. In other words, when trouble and adversity come, and they will, who's going to have your back? Now, how do you and I deal with fame? Maybe we've had it to some small extent in our lives. Have you ever been pointed out in a crowd? Maybe you haven't been media scrutinized. But wouldn't that be kind of a vulnerable glass shell to live in, always being watched? Now we're going to back up in time to the time of the first century to a popular rabbi named Jesus. Now, Jesus has been going across the land of Israel, and he's been healing and, and speaking words to people that, that made their heads spin and to think, maybe my life can be different. Maybe I don't have to live under this oppressive rule of the Roman Empire. Maybe I can live my life in a different way. Jesus comes to town and he becomes so popular that the crowds begin to become a burden. So he extracts himself to the north of Israel, to a little place called Caesarea Philippi. And he asks this question of Peter and his disciples, Who do you say that I am? And Peter says, Oh, you're the Messiah. And of course, Jesus says, That's right, but keep it under wraps. Because my time has not come. In other words, if this fame gets out of control, I might be on the cross tomorrow. And that was not the plan. Now we go forward just a little bit. The Passover night. Jesus is being arrested. He's being held for interrogation. And Peter is sitting near a fire listening when someone recognizes him as a follower of Jesus. When asked, Weren't, aren't you one of his disciples? And Peter, of course, says, I don't know this man. Three times he denies him, each time the cock crows. In other words, it's complete denial. Anytime there's three repeats, it means complete. Complete denial. Did you know that there were at least four self-proclaimed messiahs in the first and second century? It's true. Each one ran away when confronted by the Roman, Roman authorities as well as the religious authorities. Even Judas of Galilee, who rode in on his donkey on Palm Sunday, where did he go? Back to Galilee. He didn't stick around. Why? Because the heat was too hot. But there's something different about this Jesus of Nazareth. On the night in which he was betrayed, he was facing the headwinds and the rain. And he looked at Peter, and he said the most beautiful words. I want, to hear, I want you to hear what he says. In Luke chapter 22, verses 31, he says these words, when the, when the darkness of night is overwhelming and the, the troops are at the door, he's saying these words to Simon. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brethren. Jesus says this fantastic prayer. He says, it's going to be tough. It's going to be bad, but you're going to get through it. And when you come to the other side, strengthen the brethren. 
Simon Peter is like the candle in the wind. Have you ever stood up to someone and the heat of resistance becomes so strong you can feel it in your face? Have you ever stood your ground to someone who's using abusive language and wrong behavior? Any mom and dad has, I'm sure. <laughs> I can tell you right now, I sat many minutes on a chair looking at this corner of the walls. <laughs> now, the character of Jesus knows that it's tough to stand up and to do the right thing. It takes supernatural strength. And when your strength is not enough, and mark my words, they will not be enough, the mercy of God stands in the silence with the Spirit of Jesus praying over you until you get to the other side. <clears throat> now, when you get to that other side, it may be Friday, but remember, Sunday is coming. You may feel like you're a candle in the wind, but mark the words of Jesus as he prayed over Peter and said, you be shifted like wheat, but you'll come out on the other side and you will strengthen the brethren. Now, these words that we heard earlier by Amy is the, the crux of the sermon. But what I want to share with you today is the fifth gospel. And that is the, the place in which the sermon is being spoken. It's the arena in which Jesus was speaking. Can you imagine being in first century up on the Temple Mount, on the southern portion of, of the Temple Mount, and looking out over the stairwells, and down below are the mikvahot, or the baths. And to your left, you'll see all the, the, the places where people are buried. And straight in front of you is the Mount of Olives. And to your right is Golgotha. Peter is speaking in the best possible place for the first Christian sermon. You got it? He's pointing over here. He said, you crucified Jesus over here. He was denied three times by me, says Peter. You took him to an illegal place to have him, and right behind him he's pointing to the, the three uh, held, held, hold the gates where they enter to the temple mound. And that's where the elders enter. That's where they have the 70 people who gather to, to announce whether a person lives or whether a person dies. Peter's pointing to all these things. And then he points to the place where thousands and thousands of people are buried. He said, but Jesus is not dead. He is alive. And then fear strikes their hearts. But I want to share with you one thing. And we didn't read this this morning, but I want to read it to you. It's in Acts chapter 2, verse 37. It says here, Peter's word convicted them deeply, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Convicted them deeply. That word in the Greek is kata genesan. It means to prick, to spear. It means to penetrate with a needle, a lancet, or a sharp instrument. To pierce with grief. Acute pain of any kind. Has anybody felt that kind of pain before? Acute pain? If you suffered grief and loss, it could have been a pet. It could have been a parent. It could have been a child. It could have been some loved one. It's that grief that penetrates the heart and it says, oh, my life is over. That part of my life that I remember is over. 
And Peter is speaking these words to the people, and he's penetrating their hearts, and he's recalling in their minds. Once again, the fifth gospel comes to mind. In front of Peter are these steps to lead up to the Temple Mount. There are 15 of these steps. Each one of these steps is a representation of the Psalms, the Psalms of Ascent. Each of these psalms is being recited by every single pilgrim as they go into the Holda Gates so that they can praise God. But they have to stop at one particular psalm, Psalm 130, which is step number 11. I know we're not in a 12-step program here. We're on step 11. <laughs> okay, if you want to read along with me in Psalm 130, it says, From the depth of despair, O Lord, I call your, for your help. Hear my cry, O Lord. Pay attention to my prayer. Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, O Lord, who could survive? But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. I am counting on you, Lord. Yes, I am counting on you. I have put my hope in your word. I long for the Lord more than centuries long for the dawn. Yes, more than centuries long for the dawn. O Israel, hope in the Lord for with the Lord there is unfailing love and an unflowing supply of salvation. He himself will free Israel from every kind of sin. And Peter makes the bold statement, You killed our Savior, but in and through Christ there is forgiveness of your sin. And they say, what do we need to do? They, they've been penetrated through the heart. The church is about changing lives. The church is about forgiveness of sins. Sure, the past has been painful. Sure, there have been things that have, been, have gone wrong. But it doesn't have to end there. I remember one pastor who had a call from a parishioner, and the parishioner came in, and she was 70 years old. And she said to the pastor, Pastor... I haven't seen my daughter in 20 years. And the pastor said, well, what's up? She said, well, there was a big fight. And she said, I never want to see you again. And she walked out. And we haven't talked for 20 years. You could hear the pain in her voice. And the pastor said, well, why are you coming here today? She said, well, my daughter, I heard, has just had a new baby. And it hurts me that I can't see the new baby. And the pastor said, well, is there any significant event coming up? And she said, oh, yes, my daughter's going to be having a birthday next week. And the pastor said, well, why don't you write her a nice birthday card? Send it to her. Well, I don't know where her address is. Send it to the last address you knew. And she did. Seven weeks later, she comes into the pastor's office. She is excited, overjoyed. She says, Pastor, you'll never guess what happened. What? Says the pastor. My daughter called me today. I, and he said, well, what, what happened? Well, she received the card, and she was excited to know that I wanted to talk to her again. And so we're getting together next week, and I just wanted you to know. Do you know how many relationships have been cut off because of a word that was spoken long ago that can never be retracted again, and yet, with God's help, all things are possible in Christ Jesus? Peter is speaking to the crowd. He's got the best of all landscapes. And he says, your sins can be forgiven even though you created a terrible atmosphere that created capital punishment for our best friend and Savior, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. He will forgive you. And all you have to do is be baptized in the name of of Jesus the Christ. Man, I tell you what, there's no better way to live your life 
been freed from the shackles of sin. Freed from that which binds us. And I would like for us to entertain the thought that our world can be different. We have a, a song I've asked for our, our choir to sing, and it's, it's going to take just a moment. But I believe that the church doesn't depend on the best preacher in the world. What the church depends on is the compassion of Christ. It is the compassion of Christ that changes lives. In the words of Yoda, much fear do I see in him. In Christ, there is no fear. Turn your life around. We are not here just to grieve continuously, but to give our burden over to the Lord. And there is no song that comes in better tune to that than Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy, if you have your hymnal, we're going to sing it with a choir. But it is the compassion of Christ that makes the difference. And if you need that time, our pastor is here. She can help you move through those steps so that you can have a better life through Christ who strengthens us. So, choir, would you sing chapter, verse 3? Pack 340. Well, I guess it's pretty obvious. <laughs> We're here on the southern portion of the Temple Mound, and Peter is making that declaration now. If you would like for your sins to be forgiven, if you have a desire to change your actions, baptism is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual growth, grace that signifies to everyone present here that God is taking over your life. And that's what it's all about. If you would like to make that happen for your life, I'm sure our pastor will be here with us, and we can help you make that decision. So let's stand. We're going to sing, Thine Be the Glory, 308.
it's good to be with you. And I'd like to invite you to remember the words that our pastor always says. Whose are we church? We are Christ's family. Let's do that one more time. <laughs> Whose are we church? We, we are Christ's, Christ's family. family. Did that sound all right, Reverend Wall? <laughs> all right. We're so glad that you're here. Now we're going to share the benediction. Uh, let us pray. Most gracious God, you showed your love in sending Jesus Christ into the world that all might have life through him. Pour out your spirit upon your church that it may fulfill your command to preach the gospel to every creature. Send laborers into your harvest. Fill them with the Holy Spirit and with faith. Defend them in all dangers and temptations and hasten the time when your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Through the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.